Good luck. Oh, right. Um, I had reduced the volume, so I have to boost the volume again. All right. Um, let's offer bishop exchange. All right. Um, also, the piece noises aren't as loud as I might like. Let's boost it up a little bit. Um, so here, it is permissible to play such a move. Um, and this can work OK, because if the opponent gets tricky and does a bishop exchange, and then drops the bishop. Oh. Wait. I don't remember this. Um. No. No, I do remember this. Um. It's not so simple, but. Um. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What I don't recall is whether I exchange bishops and then drop it here again, or do something else. Um, yeah, I think we're going to learn something together today, so let's have some fun with it. Um, I think this is playable. If not, we'll learn momentarily why not. Um, but I think this is supposed to be okay. So I've covered my center against the bishop drop here. I don't see any bishop drop immediately destroying my position. And if they push the rook pawn again, we get some really mad tactics um, where the cover of their king is blown and or maybe I'm able to pick up the silver. Um, if I remember right, if they push this, pawn takes, if rook takes, so bishop drop. And if they retreat the rook, pawn drop here, threatening to promote the pawn. And then they bring up a piece to like defend this, and I bring my rook over to support this pawn advance. I think that's how it goes. Um, this is, or at least looks a bit risky. But I think it's doable. So I'm going to be forking this rook and silver here in a second. Um, yeah, this should be interesting. I think this is something that was touched on possibly by Hidechi, possibly also by a uh, chess master who wrote a book about Chogi. Um, I shouldn't give credit until I actually play this correctly, but yeah, I've Bishop forks up the wazoo here. Um, so if I fork the bishop, uh, the rook and the pawn in front of the king, that's interesting. If I fork the rook and the silver, I think this is the main move here. Um, we'll find out. Possibly I could have defended the knight instead of going for this absolutely crazy stuff. Um, defending the knight could have been reasonable. He could have promoted his rook, and then I still have the same fork. Um, somehow this just feels like the most compelling way for me to play this, because I get a silver. And I don't see what they get. And if they use the rook to protect this, then I can pursue the rook with my pawn and my rook. Material is even, but um, 
I'm waging an attack here. I admit I've not read every possibility here. Like, there might be some way he could defend the rook with the pawn or a bishop or something and maybe make this very interesting. Um, although, if he defends this rook, then maybe I shouldn't take it. Alright, so he promotes the rook. Um, so I have a choice between forking the rook and knight. So I'm down a knight. And just accepting that I'm down a knight. Or I, what I had planned to do is just snap this silver here. Um, which to me looks like this is playable. I've, as far as I can tell, my weaknesses are defended. As far as I can tell, I am threatening to maybe trap the rook with something. Um... Well, I guess putting my rook here is kind of risky uh, because it opens a space right in front of my king uh, to either a knight drop or a bishop drop. That could be extra risky. Hmm. Um. So normally I would panic about this sort of thing, but here... Since my king itself is a distance from their attacking pieces, I'm not panicking too much. Uh, interesting. So I've gotten a silver. They've trapped my horse. And if I exchange for the bishop and then... Yeah, this gets messy. Um, if I take the knight, uh, they take my lance. It's a bit difficult for me to attack. Hmm. Uh, actually, so, yeah, I could trade bishops and then drop my bishop back here, hitting the knight and threatening to exchange rooks while covering the square in front of my king. That might be appropriate here. Also, maybe appropriate is just take the knight and take this pawn and try to attack their king directly. I get the sense that might not work. Um, it's not as if my horse is so great right in front of their king. Um, yeah, we're going to... Um, try to cover the square in front of my king while making another threat while making another, another threat with my rook. And maybe I can find a tempo to get my king out of this um, before some disaster strikes against my own king. Yeah, I don't like that this hole in front of my king is a weakness, so I don't want to leave it completely uncovered. Um... On the other hand, it is really hard to find a way to actively defend this while making threats. So, I think this is a good square for my bishop. Um, I don't think I will find a better square for it. So I think we're threatening for me to attack the rook. They'll take my lance, and then I take the knight, indirectly attacking the rook. That's one idea I'd like to see. 
Um, maybe there's some way to trap the dragon. But I think my own king gets injured if I try something too reckless. It is very difficult to drop my pawn. Uh, well, I can't drop a pawn on any of these center files because I have pawns on each file. But it's difficult to drop pieces uh, since they have not made many weaknesses behind their pawns. So bishop here is what they're planning, perhaps? Yep. And the reason I wasn't so cons... Well, goodness. Um, the reason I wasn't concerned about this is that I can just exchange bishops. However, um, as I'm looking at it, don't I have something better than exchanging bishops here? Um... So if I exchange bishops and then I drop the bishop here again, nothing special happens. Um, except I'm no longer attacking a knight. Um, Man, this is hard to evaluate. Like, if I play my center pawn, I have blocked their bishop. Sure, they've got a knight. I don't see how the knight hurts me. Sure, they could move this other knight and try to threaten something on the center, but it's just, I don't see that happening here. And superficially, their position looks very intimidating, but um, I'm not seeing how that translates into a real attack. Oh, also, um, there's a move order in consideration that if I offer a rook exchange, well, no, that doesn't matter. Hmm. Yeah, this position's confusing. Silver in hand is a nice thing. It's better than a silver on the board. Um, I'm trying to see how he can attack me, and I'm just not seeing a way for him to attack me. I'm going to see it when it's too late. But for now... Hmm. So what's wrong with Bishop Exchange and then dropping this here again? <sighs> um, did I have a problem with that?
Not that I see. I'm just being greedy, that's all. Yeah, you need to calm down. So, yeah, the greedy thing is for me to try to checkmate in the opening when there is no checkmate. This is a more sensible way to play. And this supports me maybe dropping a silver on 5-5 five five and then munching everything in the center. Um, so I cover the square in front of my king, threatening to play rook 2-2. Two two. Um, this no longer comes with tempo because I'm not threatening to win the knight. But I can drop a silver and threaten to win the knight. Could also just drop the silver to hit the uh, lance in the corner, which I'm pretty sure gets my silver trapped. Um, but yeah, I have a silver, he's got a knight, he's got a promoted rook that presently can't do anything. And the future could be quite a weapon. But, um, so I'm a bit concerned about rook 2-3, but then I could do silver 3-2. And I don't see a next move. Well, he could take my pawn. Um, it's playable. It's just, if I'm looking for something dramatic, I'm not finding the drama. So I think my position's um, at least playable, perhaps better, because I like having a silver. Uh, but yeah, if he can find a way to get all of his pieces coordinated and after my king, um, before I get to castle, this could be a huge problem. I just don't see how he does that. Uh, also, I could silver drop here and then promote taking the pawn, attacking the knight. Um, Like, yes, this position is super spooky, but um, I do get to play moves, too. And if he doesn't move the rook, like, rook 2-2 two two is indicated, so... Unless he's got some really hard counter to that that I've completely overlooked. Um, or unless he's considering plugging the file somehow. Um, yeah. So this would fall in the category of A, if he's got some hard counter that I've completely overlooked. Um, so he's trying to checkmate me. Uh, his knight is not supported on either of these two squares. Um, yeah, he could drop a bishop here. And it would be attacking my bishop, and would be attacking various other squares. Um, so that is possible. Like I said, this position's scary, but I think I'm fine. So option A is run the king. Option B is play the rook fork like I've been planning. And there might be other options, but A looks really nice because I'm still attacking this pawn and then going to threaten to take this pawn. Um, he's running out of pieces he can drop to attack me with. Um, I mean, even after I move my king, he could still drop the bishop here. And I could fork the bishop and rook. 
takes my bishop with check. Um, so, okay. So, A is not strictly superior. Um, the rook exchange is a bit crazy because my king is in the heat of battle. Um, I'd be feeling a lot more heat if he had other pieces to drop. So what else can I try? Um, so B is rook 2-2. Two, two. Rook takes, silver takes. He drops something here. Um, and if I... Um, Oh, uh, there's still a hole right behind here where you could drop another rook. So that could be risky. So I'm thinking the safest thing is for me to get my king out of here. And then worry about complications later. Also, one of my viewers did alert me to the fact that... Um, um, Sometimes I speak with quite a bit of vocal fry. Uh, I'll try to fix that a bit. Um, it used to be that I could think about that, and I would always pitch up my voice so as to uh, mask that, I guess. Um, and yeah, speaking with vocal fry all the time is not a good thing. So it, it can be exhausting on the voice. Um, so I should have a bit of posture and try to keep that in mind. All right, so I'm still threatening um, Rick's second file, still threatening Bishop takes pawn eventually. Okay, I did not seriously expect this move. Um, it is exciting, but I didn't think this was effective. Because he, uh, he's threatening to trade two pieces for one if I use a silver to cover the square. Um, and that's if he gets to exchange. Oh, I see. He's threatening a knight fork that would fork my golds. All right. Interesting. So this could be effective. Um, So what happens if I just run away? <laughs> Running away looks super exciting. Um... I'm too curious. We have to know. Let's find out what happens here. I'm much too curious. So, if I do separate my generals here, if I do rook takes, um, silver takes, if that happens, um, then there's this fork. He could always drop the rook back here to hit my gold and silver simultaneously. Although I could move the gold away. Maybe that's playable, although it's scary. It doesn't look playable. Um, so they say you want to sabaki. Do you activate your pieces? Um, 
So I'm threatening to activate my Rook by taking the Knight. Setting off this cascade of tactics that we've all been waiting for. Um, if he checks me, I just walk away. <laughs> Walking away has been the plan here. Uh, although having a piece in hand could be quite useful. So, the main move I've been considering is just King 7 2. Just get out of here. Um, and now I see that that gives up this piece. Uh, well, that gives up two generals for a bishop and allows me to take the knight, and he continues attacking. If I take the bishop, he takes with either knight. Um, actually, he probably takes the rook first. What I've been looking at is if I get both the bishop and the rook in hand, I get to threaten stuff too. Um, it's not a one-way street. Yeah, I think I need to take this for tactical reasons. I don't think I survive if I just run away. Right, so now he takes. I'm in check. I have to recapture. And now he considers either taking with promotion or without promotion. With promotion comes with tempo. Without promotion... Um, allows him to take one of my gold generals. But what I've been really wanting to do is put my rook on his second rank, and my silver right here, and then my bishop right there. So, we'll see what I can do. Um, although if he takes a gold, this could get difficult to attack. No promote, right? Yep, there's no promotion. Um, We're in time pressure now. <laughs> uh, so, if I drop the rook... Uh, he could also drop his rook on the second. Um, hmm. I think this is the right way to start the attack. Because of the way the Nifu rule works, it's going to be difficult for him to place pieces to surround his king. He could take this gold with check. If he does, um, I think I need to recapture, allowing a knight fork, and then I dive into this corner. And while he collects whatever pieces he wants to... Okay, he's playing a defensive move. Um, which gives me more time to attack. Oh, we're both entering time pressure. <laughs> this is just so lovely. Um, yep, 
Yeah, maybe if he does, like, move this to hit my... Or I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's trying to create an escape hatch. But yeah, if he moves this, maybe I need to move my gold and deal with some of his threats instead of just ignoring it. Um... It's a good move. Don't know how to counter it. Maybe I need a knight. Maybe a knight is just the magic attacking piece that I require. Okay, I, there's a very straightforward response to this, which is block with my gold general. Um, what makes that so straightforward is because it solidifies my castle and denies him the ability to get another um, gold. You can also block the rook. If knight takes gold, uh, king takes... Well, I want my rook to attack. The rook would be very sad back here. So yeah, we should give up this silver and block the attack. And it'll be fine. Right. Um Sanjuvio. Let's make a mate threat. So if he just completely ignores what I'm doing, I take the gold, and then drop a gold here, and that's mate. Um, he can't block with the pawn. He doesn't have a gold to block with. He could get a gold. he just have to sacrifice his rook for it. Sanjubyo. They say an early escape of the king is worth eight moves. Um, I'm thinking that this somehow I've escaped early with my king and my opponent has not. Okay, this is just mate. Um, good game. Oops. <laughs> We've all been there. Good game. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> well done, he says. Uh, thanks, I say. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, who saw that coming? All right, we're going to turn off emote only mode. Note that nobody told me to do that. I found it on my own. I can... <laughs> uh, yeah. So, classic me fashion. Um, I started attacking too early, but maybe it worked out. Um, uh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've been working my way through Katagami's Mate in One chapter. Or not Mate in One. Um, he's got chapter one of his which pieces do you need to mate. I'm still working my way through it. Uh, sure. All right. So there is a ton to look at. Um, unfortunately, I'm not the world's leading expert on this stuff. Um, I'm trying to recall which source I heard about this opening from. Um, but I think possibly Hidechi and or uh, I'm drawing a blank on the chess master's name. Uh, Okay, so we're in agreement that, like, um, yeah, this is, like, ultra, mega, super sharp, and, um, I'm just better here. So, yeah, the thing we've been, so the point here was that if he defends like this, this is all coming, so, yeah. Um, um, so I think, oh, yes, this is true. He can just listen to us live here. Um, would you prefer that we do this on the big board then for all the spectators? We could just max out the board size and write and talk about it right in the platform here. Yeah, so I think... Um, uh, I'm trying to remember. There was a chess master who wrote a book about Shogi, and I think he wrote about this, and I think separately Hidechi commented about this. Just like, this is an opening trap. Um, so it's good to be aware of. Uh, so yeah, here I am stand better. So uh, instead we picked a fighting move. Um, and that's fine. Um, yeah, here, so I've not played this position before. So this is exciting for me as well. Um, I wonder what I'm supposed to do. So, like, trading bishops is probably fine. I wonder if this is fine, too. Um... <laughs> what is this? Zero castles. Uh, yeah, this is the ultra mega super rapid attack. Um, uh, Jen tells me to tell GLGRV has been slacking on attendance of Sume stream. But uh, yeah, I usually... Um, well, I've been playing Central File Rook. I can't even make excuses, but like... Usually I've been playing stuff that's not Static Rook, so I don't have to get into all the nitty-gritty, but this occasion I couldn't decline. Oh, yeah, Transport's our expert. He knows everything about this. Um, no, I don't really know uh, what's going on. This makes sense to me. And so there's, like, variations here, and, um, yeah, I don't know what the other variations are. I guess taking this. Um, anyway, this resolved the way it did. And even here, it's kind of a mess. So I played bishop 4-4, which I think you played the best move against. 
and I don't know how I could have done better. This did look interesting, but why did I reject it? Oh, right, because I was afraid of a uh, night drop. Uh, not now, but that's coming up. So, um, that's why I chose not to do this, because I'm just ridiculously exposed here. Maybe best is this. I wonder. Um... Yeah, this to be kind of fun. Um, get my king out of here while I still have a chance to do that. But maybe somehow I'm losing buckets of material somewhere. I don't know. Um, yeah, so, okay, this is an idea. Um, <laughs> how do I respond to this, I wonder? Oh, I think there's a problem here. So, and that's that I'm going to get to play this anyway. And then hit this and whatever lands in this corner. Um, so, yeah, we got a really interesting game, but, um, yeah, this might not be the right square for a knight. In other lines in this game, I was looking at ideas like this. Um, I'm not sure if any of that would have worked out. In other lines, I was looking at ideas like this. But I'm not sure any of this quite works here. Um, so it's a bit hard for me to say what's going on. Um, but yeah, I think you did defend well. And I wasn't sure if I should like drop this here, drop this here. Um, Maybe this bishop drop on 4-4 was actually problematic because it made a hole that I could use. <laughs> ah, GLGR has been attending all the Sume streams, so he's been watching. He knows what you've been up to. Um, yeah, so maybe this is called for here. Um, maybe somehow this even might be playable now, whereas previously there's this tremendous weakness. Maybe in the sharpest line here, somehow the fact that like this is open might be a countervailing force. Um, I don't even know how. But boy, it would be cool if I had some awesome combination to just win. Um, but that seems unlikely. Yeah, I don't see how to just win here. And so let's say I do something like this. Um, I guess you take a gold, and if I recapture, this could protect, so yeah, I guess this isn't so bright. Um, so yeah, maybe I can't do this ridiculous thing. Oh, I guess I considered this too. Um, maybe I need to look more at this. Yeah, I should probably unmaximize the board since I don't really know what's going on and I don't know. Oh, never mind, we have no watchers in the room. It's just GLJR and myself here. Um But yeah, I don't really know. If there's other ideas here, I'm not seeing them. 
So I think I just got away with an opening trap. Um, also considering a night drop on 3-3. Three, three. All right, so that's over here. Um, but yeah, you're thinking gold 3-2 is okay for Gota. I think you're right. Um, yeah, I think you are correct that, um, since the knight's here now, there's not a whole lot that the knight, um, that you can't, like, drop a pawn. Not that you could anyway, but, yeah, there's no way to hit the gold here. Um, so, I, I think I've seen this formation before in one of Hidechi's videos. I don't remember which. Um, yeah, this was very nice. Uh, let's put this up on the big board for everyone again. There we go. So, yeah, this uh, did well attacking the center square. Um, Bishop fork here. Are you referring to something in this position or a different position? I guess maybe you're talking about the other one where I had this bishop fork. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about uh, Senta doing some kind of fork. Um, yeah, this move, I think, is what, um, somewhere around here is when the tide shifted from just from being unclear to me just being a lot safer. Um... All right, so when I place the knight, oh, so you're talking about, do we do the bishop fork right here then? Uh, in the previous variation, when we move the gold up in response to, okay. So yeah, when we're talking about, um, hang on. Hang on, so previous variation, we had done a knight drop, and then this, and you're considering a bishop drop back here. Um, let's see, I think that was on move 23 somehow. So how did we get there? I think we were here, here here, and this is what you're saying. Um, so, okay, both squares the knight could go to are occupied. Um, oh, oh, you thought this shifted in your favor when I moved my king. You certainly did get an initiative when I did this. Um, it was scary. Um, no, I thought I was better. Um, but I guess we'll get to one thing at a time, so... Sorry, you got ads now. But, um, yeah, I think this is the position you were talking about with this bishop fork. Yeah, welcome back. I think this is what you're referring to, is this bishop fork here? After I move my king and the knight drop and the gold moves and this. Yeah. Um, I think the problem here is that the knight uh, has nowhere to go. And the bishop has nowhere to go. So... Um, scary as this looks, I think I'm okay here. Everything is just barely defended. Sack for gold, then promote. Um, 
Okay, yeah, you'd need to put the pawn on the board first, right? In the variation previously, I had placed the bishop at 3-5. Oh, I'm sorry. That's how we got confused. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I think you're right that maybe that refutes my bishop 3-5 variation somehow. Um... But yeah, that's interesting. Making a threat of promoting this, and then you can sack, and then promote, and make more attacks. Um, that could be powerful. Uh, I think it's still complicated, and I still have a bishop and a silver in hand, so I do have some resources here too. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure. I want to say that I like my position in this particular variation, but I think, yeah, if we go back to the original variation, this thing, um, yeah, this could be maybe more serious. I don't know, somehow. Okay, well, here you get to take this. That's pretty nice. Wait, how long has this been an idea? Is that maybe possible in the game, too? No, because I covered the knight drop. That wasn't even what I was trying to defend against, but I did cover this here. Um... So, okay. But, yeah, maybe if I had not played bishop 4-4, maybe we would have seen this. Um, and then you would have a chance to do this, and it's my turn to attack, but what can I do? Um, probably a lot, but I'm not sure what. Um... Yeah, this night drop is interesting. Um, I'm just surprised. Like, this is very heavy, and my king is already starting to run away from it. So, I'm hoping that somehow um, I can come out victorious in this corner. Hmm. Well, this could be fun too, right? So, this sets off an immediate threat. Um, but I guess you have a sacrifice. Um, and then maybe you could win my rook somehow? Hmm. Wait, what's going on here? Alright, you're thinking bishop takes gold, silver takes bishop, knight promotes. Um... In this variation. In the other variation, with the bishop, just take the gold. Silver's pinned. Oh! Oh, right, so in the other variation where my king's just on in the center, uh, the silver is pinned, so you can just take the gold directly. Okay, yeah, right. That makes sense. Instead of placing a pawn. Um, maybe this pawn placement is just not called for. So we back up the variation here. Maybe there's something we can do better than placing the pawn here. I'm not sure. Um, OK. 
Okay. You still intend this, even though I'm threatening your dragon. Um... Okay. Yeah, also I could take the knight. Oh, I see. Alright, so... Yeah, that is an idea. Unfortunately, I don't have mate against it. Um, hmm. It'd be nice to counter that with a checkmate if I could, but I don't have a mate. Still, I think I would just take the dragon and let you take here. Um, so you have a dragon and a rook in hand, right? How does this go? Okay, we put the rook down. Now, do I take the knight or do I take the other knight? Um... I think I want to take the other knight. So, I think I'm surviving against this attack. And at the same time, I'm starting to build up a fun counterattack. Um... All right, so that's a pawn. I guess that does um, prevent me from just taking this promoted knight. But I'm not sure, like you need four pieces to mate, and this is not quite four pieces. Uh, yeah. Looks exciting, but I just don't think it's quite enough to pull off the, whatever you're trying to attack. And whatever I counter with here is going to be very heavy. Um, yeah, so I think I survived this. Yeah, so this whole intuition... Okay, how about... Uh, perhaps I can actually hand over host or subhost or something here. The subhost even allow him to move the pieces or something? Yeah. Okay, cool. So if he wants to show off some other variations, we could take a look at that. Yeah, so I think I just run away. This theme of running away seems... Use oh, hang on. <laughs> uh, as useful as this idea is, uh, maybe just sacrifices the gold general again. I mean, how far can I run? Maybe it's okay. But yeah, it is spooky if I start giving another gold general away. Hmm. Maybe I do have to take this. And there's no king rook fork. Um, hmm. Man, that's the move I want to play. I really like to play that move, but yeah, this looks like it gets my king in trouble. Um, I'm not sure if I have time to actually take this promoted knight. Well, so, let's see, we've got this cut off, we've got this cut off. We've only got a few squares to go, right? How do we checkmate this king? 
Um, yeah, we have crossed uh, far beyond the point of no return here. And it's just a question of where the mate is, not if it's possible. Um, at least it feels that way. Um, and I could use another rook. Only because I understand how rooks work. I don't understand how the rest of these pieces do anything. Um, uh, there's so much to read. It'd just be a lot easier to throw this into any engine and ask it, what's the magic move here? Um, yeah, actually, that is useful. That was the first thing I was looking at, but it actually continues looking quite useful. So what this achieves is cutting off another square. Um, so I'm in check. So I have to run somewhere. Um, it's not so easy to run, is it? This looks crazy at first, but um, might be fine. If it is fine, I'm okay. <laughs> if it's not fine, I'm in trouble. Yeah, maybe I needed to focus more on trying to get my king somewhere safe. Because, like, it's scary. Having my king in the center. Yeah, so this is what I was thinking about. And this is the next move I was thinking about. Uh, uh, so... Yeah, I'm not sure that... Well, this is all really complicated. Um... Oh. Well, thankfully for you, that's actually winning. Um, it's not, mate. So, yeah, this actually does win for Senta because my king is forced to capture a pawn. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's a pretty simple direct mate. Um... So my other idea, I was thinking of blocking with something else, but it doesn't matter because pawn drop still wins there. Which in turn means this pawn check um, looks decisive. Um, I guess you continue this way. Well, maybe it's not decisive. This is insane. Absolute madness ensues. <sighs> Consult your favorite engine. But the other fun part about this, this pawn's defended. So, actually, um, yeah, I, I climbed this far and no further. And here, this gold has failed to checkmate my king. So, I survive. I didn't need to take on 5-6. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. So, I got panicked there for a moment. Um, 
But yeah, this gold drop doesn't seem to do the trick. You need four pieces to mate. I was getting all gloom and doom about this, but apparently it's fine. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, yeah, still consult your favorite engine for evaluation of this sort of thing. Um, I see that there is going to be a simul upcoming pretty uh, shortly on another streamer's channel. Is there anything else we wanted to look at here? Um, yeah, that's exciting too. Yeah, at this point I'm not sure I could provide any better advice than the engine at this kind of endgame stuff. Uh, the proverb does say a one-space dragon, not a one-space uh, promoted knight. You're right. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, so back to the game. I thought my king was safer, um, where was it? Here. I, th I thought my king was safer than your king is. The engines are better at reading endgames than either of us, but... If I were super concerned about this position, I would play a defensive move, but I was not concerned. But if I were concerned, this is the move I would play. Um, okay, so as for how the end game itself actually resolved, and whether I thought it was safe here, here I thought it was okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that like, this bishop doesn't make the attack any stronger than it already is. Your attack is already quite strong. Adding the bishop to it does threaten to win a piece, so I have to take, but... Um, and since I've captured, now you're forced to exchange rooks. Um, maybe this spices it up a bit. Um... But this also could get very complicated. Uh, but as for the how the actual endgame played out, um, so they, the saying is that four pieces is a mate, and I'm not seeing four near my king. So I was thinking I was fine here. Um, just because like I can put a piece on this opened square here. If this pawn were back a square, I would be pretty scared. But since I could make use of the space right next to your king, I thought this looked exciting and like something I had to play. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my take on it. Um, I'm not sure if it's right or not, but like if this pawn were back one square, uh, I would be panicking at this point. But here, I thought I have lots of chances against this king. Um, let's see, what was the next move here? Oh, yeah, I wonder. The other thing is, I wonder just how good or bad this is. If you try to escape. Um, I thought I was better here, but maybe this is the way out. Yeah. I mean, it's reasonable to have some fear because, like, I can win a gold for a silver. And then I can threaten to do stuff with the gold. Um, it's like, this is one possibility. I'm not sure what all the possibilities here are. Um, but this is one of them. So, yeah, it's reasonable to have some fear. But, um, I think this is what I expected to happen. Um, and I wanted to see what would happen next. I couldn't figure it out. Um, you're still forking my two golds. If you are in desperate need of material, you could take either of these. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure how this all resolves. This is unclear to me. Um... Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, sorry that I had delayed this uh, teaching game until after uh, the uh, Sunday Shogi with Shogi Harper. Because uh, this would be something really interesting to ask her about. Um, she'd probably tell us things about the rest of the game, too. Um, but, yeah, this... I haven't played very many of positions like this, so I was very curious what was going to happen next. Um, and I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, it's hard for me to judge. Because neither king is really castled the way you normally would have. So, like, you got this potentially could take the gold and then fork the king and take the other gold and do all kinds of stuff. Um, so. Oh yeah, there's also this too. I think I would probably take here. Yeah, and so this is check. At this point, I was just curious what was going to happen. I was in this to play with fire. So, um, this is the way that I get to play with fire. Um, it might be completely unsound, or it could be perfectly legitimate. I'm not really sure. Um, can I win this bishop? No. If I try to go pursue the knight and the bishop, he promotes the bishop here. Uh, so I can run away. So, yeah, possibly this is just insane, and, like, I'm not sure. Possibly everything I'm saying is completely wrong, too, uh, which is concerning, but, um, yeah, maybe, maybe your attack is actually winning here. Um... Yeah, this has me thinking. Well, as fun as that check looks, um, like, this is the move I really want to play. Just cutting off as many squares for this king as I can before I start checking. Oh, yes, you're right. The Sunday stream is earlier, thanks to the daylight saving time. I forgot. Um, so yeah, possibly this is just mad on my part. Um, I don't know. Engines could figure this out better than we could. Um, so yeah, sorry I, I'm giving so much indecisive commentary, but this is just something I look forward to playing, um, because I don't really understand it very well. Um, yeah, the other thing that could maybe be fun in something like this, I don't know if it'd be this position or maybe the one before it. Like, how about this idea? <laughs> uh, like... Yeah, this is probably completely unsound here, but still. Man, there's just too much. Like, it'd be safer to play it back here a bit, but still. Like, the idea that, like, you could take this pawn, and I need some way to deal with that. Um, yeah, I should leave this to the engines, because there's only so much I can... Oh! Yeah, that would be a nice fork. Oh my goodness. Yes, okay, this rook drop is safer than the other one by far. But still, um, yeah, I'm not sure how this all resolves. Um, so, like, this covers a lot of squares that I might potentially want to use. And also sets up a mate in one threat. And maybe to counter this, I have to play something like this. Um, yeah. 
It looks scary. All of this looked scary to me. I, like, I don't have a very firm grasp of this position. Um. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. And then you have this, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe this is not so bright. I forgot the gold was protecting the square. My mistake. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. But still. Spooky stuff, man. Um, that's just a question of who gets made at first. <laughs> um, although, yeah, that mates. Just kidding. So that answers the question. So yeah, um, maybe there's not much in the way of general advice to give here. And even if somehow I survive that attack, then the rook just swings over to the second file. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I know you can all hear me, but yeah, just for the record, I do need to put that into an engine, have it, the engine analyze the game. Um, yeah, I don't think anybody makes a career out of this style. But it can be fun to play. So. Yeah. I think that, yeah, possibly that's an understatement. That when I get confused, I attack. So that leads to some very sharp games. Um, and thankfully this time I came out on top. So, hooray. All right. Yeah, thanks for the analysis. We'll put it through Shogi Gui with uh, Giko and see what's recommended. But uh, yeah, I think just escaping the king is important. And I said my piece about like this at some point might be important too. But possibly an engine could say everything that we just looked at is wrong. So you never know. But yeah, my two cents there. At least one of us probably should have taken more time to castle. Maybe both. We'll see. Alright, thanks for playing, and thanks for the analysis.